This is the town of St. Pierre, a bustling town located on the French island of Martinique in the year 1902. The weather is beautiful, birds are chirping, and life is getting on as usual, a picture in stark contrast to the impending doom that is about to follow. We are now going to meet Leon Compare Leandre, a 28-year-old shoemaker who was one of the very few people to survive a recent eruption killing almost 30,000 people. So Leon, how are you feeling right now? Well, I'm still recovering from the burns of various degrees that have coated my entire body. I felt like I was in an oven for over three days and I lost my entire family. So suffice to say, I'm not feeling very good. Wow, I am sorry for your losses and the pain you had to endure. Can you describe how you survived this terrible event? Well, basically, I dived into the nearby ocean to avoid as many burns as I could from the lava flows. After that, I dipped and dodged like John Wick into various houses before they collapsed from the pyrocrastic flows of the volcano. At one point, I laid in my bed and awaited certain death, but I came to my senses and barely ran six kilometers away to Font St. Dennis for help. To be honest, I'm, I'm very lucky to survive. Well, I'm glad you're alive, and I hope you continue to make dope shoes in the future. Thank you for your time, and I hope you will be able to work to recover from this trauma. Thanks for having me on. So how did this happen? Surely there were warning signs that showed the volcano was bound to erupt and cause significant destruction. In reality, politics and pride played a major role in preventing people from evacuating the island before they met their timely demise. We now go a bit back in time to Louis Moter, the governor of Martinique, who set up a commission to outline whether the nearby volcano posed any danger to the public. It's conspiracy theory. It's conspiracy theory. The volcano is never, ever going to erupt. Ever. But how do you know this? My team checked it out, and it's totally fine. We, we actually post updates in the newspaper every week. I just had a picnic on the volcano's crater with my one-year-old last Wednesday. It's, it's, the volcano's completely dormant. So, you deny the recent reports of rumbling and gases, and ash spreading all over the island. It's utter poppycock. The public will not be stirred by conspiracy wackos. We have an important election coming up, and I cannot have anyone leaving the island. I have in fact set up troops and roadblocks to bar anyone from leaving the island. It seems harsh and a bit crazy, but if the volcano actually erupts, I am not going to concern myself with what-ifs. We have the best team on the island studying the volcano, and personally, I'm convicted that it poses no unique threat. Okay, thank you for your time. Push up. Perhaps Luis Moutet should have taken the warning signs of the volcano more seriously. In the days preceding, the entire city of St. Pierre was burned to the ground. Tens of thousands of people, livestock, and wildlife were killed, and buildings were destroyed. So how did this happen? The island of Martinique was itself formed by eruptions from the strata volcano for over 400,000 years. Magma from these eruptions have compiled, cooled, and hardened to form the island you see today. Mount Pele itself is labeled as an active volcano formed by a subduction zone in the Lesser Antilles Volcanic Arc. This is where convergent tectonic plates undergo a process of subduction, in which one plate moves beneath the other plate. In the case of Mount Pele, it is located in the subduction zone, adjacent to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, an underwater system making up a large portion of the Atlantic Ocean. It is also responsible for creating volcanic islands in the area. The two plates in question that are undergoing this geological process are the Atlantic and Caribbean plates. The crust of the Atlantic plate is forcing its way under the crust of the Caribbean plate. This ongoing cycle also creates a nearby oceanic trench, in addition to the arc of volcanoes, from which Mount Pele comprises. The damage Mount Pele caused was incredible. Wildlife was displaced from the area surrounding the volcano. Birds, horses, and other animals lie dead in the streets due to volcanic gases and suffocating from the intense heat. The pyroclastic flows from the magma destroyed many buildings on the island and left a streak of utter destruction. Volcanoes also cool the atmosphere in a geological process where sulfur dioxide is converted to sulfuric acid in the air. This acid condenses and creates sulfate aerosols, which in turn cool the Earth's atmosphere at a rate of half a degree Fahrenheit every few years or so. We now go to the final survivor of the Mount Pele eruption, Rudger Sobaris, who was a prisoner in the months leading up to the major eruptions. On death row. Yeah, yeah, I killed someone. Uh, that dude called me ugly after a long day at work while I was drinking a beer. I asked him if he had a problem, and he said his problem was with my face. Well, I made sure he didn't have a face. But unfortunately, the law enforcement did not like that defense. But you're free now. Oh yeah, I'm torn the world in a circus act. It's actually sick. I'm basically one of the only miraculous survivors of the volcanic eruptions at Mount Pele. Yeah, all my charges were revoked. Wow, okay, that's nice for you, I guess. So, how did you ultimately survive? Weren't you in a cell? Yeah, it was pretty dark most of the time. There was a small window I could see out of. I could tell something was up when I started baking like an oven-baked pizza in my cell. At first I started hopping around to minimize the burns on my feet, but soon my whole body began to peel and burn hotter than I could ever have imagined I could endure. I could hear the screams and cries for help from the inmates around me, and I was screaming myself. I was there for several days, but it seemed like an eternity. Then I was finally saved. Alright, well, amazing. What an incredible story. Well, thank you for your time. Do you plan on living a lawful life now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that was the old me. Burning alive for extended periods of time really changed my perspective on things. I do have just one stipulation, though. What's that? But don't talk about my face. <laughs> well, definitely. Well, I hope you have a good time performing for the circus. Thank you. So what can we learn from the destruction at Mount Pele? Well, for one, we need to realize that it is way more beneficial to adapt to the Earth's systems rather than to ignore them or act like they aren't there. This was the mistake of the inhabitants of Martinique, who denied the reality of the danger the volcano posed and ultimately died because of it. Nowadays, we do a much better job of accurately assessing the threat level of these tectonic plate processes and utilizing the necessary safety protocols. We would like to thank our interviewees for their time and wish them the best of luck in their physical and emotional recovery. This has been an inside look at Mount Pele 1902 with Tony Mandel.